take A binomial, like say A plus B, and we square it, we all know what comes next, just out of memory, but for the sake of this video, let's write it out. This is A plus B times A plus B. Now what you do next is you apply the distributive property a number of times. Sometimes that's given a cute nickname, but let's not lose sight of the fact that it is the distributive property, just multiple times. Now when we do it this time, I want us to kind of ignore the fact that multiplication is commutative and also not use exponents. So A times A, we'll write A A. A times B, we'll write A B. B times A, we'll write B A. And B times B, we'll write B B. Now why did I do that? Well, it's because I want to make it very clear that a plus b squared is nothing other than the sum of all of the strings of length 2 consisting of a's and b's. In other words, this is every combination of a and b. That's what it is. And this is generally true even for other exponents. It's just going to change the string size. You can see that from just how the distributive property is going to run through these expressions. In other words, if we have a plus b and we cube it, that is nothing other than the sum of all of the strings of three characters with A's and B's in them. And there we go. That is A plus B cubed. It's the sum of all of the strings of three characters consisting of A's and B's. So using this information, we can come up with a general formula for A plus B to the power of N. All right, so based on that, we have an idea of what this is. It's the sum of all of the strings of length n consisting of a's and b's. So all we need to do is round them all up, account for them, and add them up. Okay, so let's do that. Let's say we have this string here. We'll say that these first k positions have a's in them, and the rest have b's in them. And remember, there are n positions in total. All right, so this string here is representing a to the power of k and b to the power of n minus k. Now, since multiplication is commutative, this string is representing many others. In other words, if it's in a different order but still k many a's, that string could be rearranged to be another one like this. So how many such strings are there? Well, th there are n positions, right? And we can pick k of those positions to have an a in them. So that's just n choose k. So this is the number of strings with k many a's in them. And so all we need to do is sum up all of these as k ranges. And what is the range of k? Well, k can be 0, of course. When k is 0, that's the term b to the n. So we have k equals 0. And k can be n, that's the term a to the n. So we have n as the final value for k in our sum. And we're summing up these guys here. n choose k times a to the k times b to the n minus k. And that is the binomial formula. It's not a bad formula. It's just saying add up all of the strings of length n, the exponent, consisting of your terms. So next time you see this, you shouldn't hesitate to apply the binomial formula if it happens to come up. That's going to do it for this quick little video. I'll see you guys next time.